What is Euro 7? I'm Phil Curry here with an updated entry into AutoVista 24's Explainer series. And if you want to know what certain automotive industry terms mean, or how different technologies work, then check out the What Is playlist on the AutoVista 24 YouTube channel. While you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe to be notified of every new piece of content. We first covered the Euro 7 emission standards last year. However, since then, the new regulations have changed considerably, the result of many debates in the European Parliament and lobbying by automotive groups. This video will therefore cover the latest version of the standard, which is expected to be enshrined into law later this year. The Euro standards are a set of emissions regulations that car makers selling vehicles in Europe have to abide by. These standards set the maximum level of emissions a vehicle can produce before it can be approved for sale via type approval. Typically, these are exhaust emissions, such as carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, hydrocarbons and particulate matter. This last one's very important, especially for Euro 7, and we'll cover that a little later on. Notably, Euro standards do not regulate carbon dioxide emissions. These are subject to their own standards. Euro standards are updated every so often. The first was announced in 1992 and the current version, Euro 6, was introduced in 2014. Each sees more stringent rules set around emissions. The new version of Euro 7 has seen the European Parliament adopt a new position dubbed the General Approach, which keeps tailpipe emissions in line with Euro 6 legislations. This means petrol cars cannot emit more than one gram per kilometre of carbon monoxide, 0.1 gram per kilometre of hydrocarbons and 0.06 grams per kilometre of nitrogen oxides. They are also limited to 0.005 grams per kilometre of particulate matter from the tailpipe. Diesel vehicles are more restricted and cannot emit more than 0.5 grams per kilometre of carbon monoxide, 0.08 grams per kilometre of nitrogen oxides and 0.005 gram per kilometre of particulate matter. However, the targets for particulate matter from non-tailpipe emissions remain. This was a new approach in the Euro 7 standards and is aimed at cutting down the smaller output, known as PM 2.5, from brakes and tyres. The current version of Euro 7 legislation does include target limits for brakes. These are dependent on the powertrains of the vehicles. For internal combustion engines, hybrids and plug-in hybrids, these cannot emit more than seven milligrams of particulate matter per kilometer per vehicle until the end of 2029. For battery electric vehicles, the targets are stricter. They can only emit three milligrams of particulate matter per kilometer per vehicle until the end of 2029. The limits for 2030 onwards are yet to be set. The new rules will regulate the durability of batteries installed in electric cars and vans in order to increase consumer confidence. This will also reduce the need for replacing batteries early in the life of a vehicle and therefore reducing the need for critical raw materials required to produce these batteries, another environmental gain. The minimum performance requirements of battery electric vehicles and hybrids are for the battery unit to have 80% health after five years or 100,000 kilometers and 70% health after eight years or 160,000 kilometers. This is expected to stay in place until mid 2030. So why the changes? Well, car makers argue that the financial impact of developing vehicles to meet the original stricter requirements when they're also trying to develop new zero emission technologies would impact the latter unless they abandoned internal combustion engines altogether. This would mean that the used car market would effectively freeze, with drivers not wanting to buy an electric car holding on to their vehicles for longer. Older Euro standard models would remain on the roads and pollution levels would continue to remain high. By effectively freezing Euro standards, car makers can continue to develop on their current projections and cleaner models would continue to replace older units. The European Automobile Manufacturers Association, ASEA, stated in one of its fact sheets last year that under the original iteration of Euro 7 emission standards, Europe would only have seen a 4% reduction in nitrogen oxide emissions due to the non-replacement of the vehicle park. 
Extending the Euro 6 target will instead see an 80% reduction in nitrogen oxide tailpipe emissions by 2035, based on 2020 levels. The new legislation is likely to be adopted by mid-2024, although it remains to be seen when it will be formally introduced, with the European Commission plan for July 2025 deemed unrealistic, and a date 30 months after the entry into the force of the regulations for new cars undergoing type approval, and 42 months for all cars on the market, suggested. Don't forget to check out autovista24.com for detailed market overviews and analysis. You can get even more involved by listening to the Autovista 24 podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google Play and Amazon Music. And remember to subscribe to the Autovista 24 YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.